American tourists are traveling further and further in bigger and bigger numbers. The number is increasing by about 11% year on year. But there's a snag. As you can see, many of them aren't coming down to Australia. For the last 10 years, the number of Americans visiting down under is almost flat. And so that was an enormous challenge for Tourism Australia. Faced with only around 370,000 visitors from America, they looked at the sales funnel to try and understand why is the number so small. And it's a simple funnel. You don't visit a place if you don't have a desire for it. You don't have a desire for it if you don't have the intention to visit. Intention can only come from consideration and you can't consider a place you haven't heard of. And when you look at the numbers for Australia, at first sight, they seem pretty good. Let's assume 100% awareness, 27% consider, 8% intend to visit Australia at some point, and a whopping 5% already say it's the number one place they desire to go to. And when we look at those conversion rates from one stage to another, again, they appear healthy. Around 27% consideration conversion. If we take 8% who intend to visit, off a 27% base who consider, again, a healthy 30% conversion. And that desire factor, it's a 63% conversion from those who intend to visit. So again, it looks healthy. So what's the problem? In order to truly understand a sales funnel, you have to look at conversions, and then you have to look at competitor conversions. And then it becomes clear. When we look at Australia versus the UK, in the mind of the American tourist, for example, we see similar levels of consideration and similar levels of desire. The problem comes in the middle, intention. The uh, American has almost double the levels of intention to visit the UK, which is why, as you can see, they get 10 times as, as many American visitors. And it's a similar story with France, where again, Australia underperforms on that intention metric versus the French, also versus the Italians. And in fact, compared to the rest of the world, it's the same story. Australia overperforms when it comes to consideration and to desire. And you can see why. Looking at the drivers of consideration, Australia's food, nature, coastal environment, it drives an enormous surge of consideration. But the problem for Tourism Australia is clear. It's intention. There might be large amounts of consideration, but many American tourists just don't intend to visit. And when you dig into the numbers, it's clear why. There are significant barriers to intention, and they all relate to the same thing, the tyranny of distance. Australia is perceived to be too far away. So the strategy for Tourism Australia in 2018 was very straightforward. The aspiration was to start to grow US tourism numbers again and try and almost double them to $6 billion of tourism spend by 2020. To do that, they targeted the high value US traveler, the one that goes further and spends more. The positioning for Australia to this traveler was a beautiful place meets a refreshingly irreverent people. And the objective, the main objective was of course, to increase that intention conversion variable. And while we're at it, why not? Also increase desirability and consideration too. The campaign that was designed to achieve those objectives was a brilliant combination of fakery and movie propaganda. Uh, the campaign for Dundee, Son of a Legend, began on December 26, 2017, and the first teasers suggested a big new movie. Hey. Oh. Good day, losers. That's not a knife. That's a knife. Look at that. Look at me. Look at the knife play. Hmm? Just over a month later, it was time for the Super Bowl 2018 and a chance to, theoretically at least, present the first full trailer for this hot new movie that everyone was talking about. But there was a surprise in store. That's not a knife. That's a knife. <laughs> That's me. Brian Dundee? Yep. Really? Yeah. 
Really? Why do you keep saying really? You're all there, mate? Nothing to see here, man. Just getting a clean shave with my machete. See you next week, Barry. You know, when your dad did it, he was he was much. Okay, and when my dad told me about this, he was just like, yeah, I just came up and he did this, okay? I just don't think he can see you from back here. Not a lot of crocs out here, huh? It's just 37,000 miles of pristine, beautiful beach, mate. Did you know that Australia makes some of the finest wines in the entire world? No, I, 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 I didn't know that. Thank you very much. Wait, hold up. This isn't a movie. No. It's a tourism ad for Australia. Yes. But listen, you're the best Crocodile Dundee since Crocodile Dundee. Really? Yes, really. Mm. And we had the best trip ever, didn't we? It was pretty sweet. Hey, you know, there are some great flight deals to Australia right now. Dude, I get it. It's not a movie, it's a commercial. With the secret now revealed, the camp the, the campaign essentially transformed itself. Rather than talking about this fictional movie, it became apparent it was time to now invite and convert America into actual tourist dollars. Uh, we saw extensive use of outdoor advertising, uh, and most importantly, digital video now, which took the stars of the fictional movie and addressed many of the barriers that were stopping Americans from visiting Australia. For example. Hey, how long is that flight to Australia? Oh, it's not too long. You could watch lots of movies. Lots of wine. Lots of, yeah, yeah, lots of wine. What's the best thing to wear on a plane? Well, see, I fly with Qantas, so I wear Qantas pajamas. Oh, that's so the best thing. So you get thing. a top and the bottom. I love that. Yes. What do you think the worst thing to wear on a plane would be? Oh, something really... Equally important was performance marketing, now offering specific op um, offers from uh, Australian travel partners to try and convert all of these American tourists to actually book a vacation. And the results were spectacular. Not only was this the most uh, enjoyed and remembered ad for the Super Bowl 2018, the earned media metrics were spectacular. And of course, uh, it deservingly won a gold effie in 2019. But look at the numbers and the effectiveness uh, for Australia as a country. Um, awareness can't go up anymore, but consideration up a massive 32 points. Uh, even more impressive, desire increased by 50 points. But most impressive, intention, that key barrier to visiting Australia for Americans, up by 83%. And so far, even though it's early days, there's been an increase of 13% in bookings by Americans visiting Australia. What are the lessons we can take from Tourism Australia? First, and it is missing from so many approaches, before tactics, we must have strategy. Too often, we see organisations with a sales issue and they decide their strategic objective is to increase sales by $100 million. That's not a strategic objective. Similarly, too often, we see organisations immediately rushing into tactics. Let's do Instagram. Uh, let's use a TV campaign without any strategy behind it. And once again, we will see strategic objectives like uh, 50,000 social mentions that aren't actually strategic at all. That's a tactical goal. Instead, see the management of brands and marketing as a four-stage channel. It starts with diagnosis and understanding the market. It moves then, as we see with Tourism Australia, to strategy and to developing clear strategic objectives that always come down to answering these three eternal questions. Who is my target? What is the position? And what are my strategic objectives for this particular campaign? And with those in mind, we can develop the right tactics to serve the strategy and inevitably have a much bigger effect on ultimate sales performance. You see also from Tourism Australia the power and importance of the sales funnel, which is not dead, it's still the backbone of all great effectiveness. We also see the power of articulating clear strategic objectives and using them to drive a campaign forward. And finally, you see the power of strong strategic thinking in creating a fundamentally effective and successful and wonderful campaign. Or as we like to say down under, Ripper. Visit the EFI's website for a database of all their amazing case studies. And come to Marketing Week for more videos in this series and information on the Mini MBA in marketing.